99% of people don't optimize their monitor settings, and it's adding unnecessary input delay, making your image quality blurrier and overall just worse. That's why today we'll go over the best built-in monitor settings, advanced CRU settings for lower delay, and many more unknown monitor tweaks, which will make your monitor more responsive. But before we get into the video, I want to tell you guys about EXM Premium. It's our all-in-one app, which will completely optimize your PC for the best possible FPS and lowest possible input delay. We have over 3,500 positive customer reviews. If you're interested, make sure to check out exmtweaks.com and use Premium to unlock your PC's full potential. By the way, we also have a free version, which includes 10% of the optimizations. So firstly, we will go over the built-in monitor settings. Keep in mind that every single monitor brand has different setting names or even different settings altogether. So the way you open your settings is by pressing one of the buttons on the back of your monitor. Usually the biggest one will open the settings UI. So first I'd recommend turning off anything called like game enhanced mode, gaming mode, anything like that. It will add extra overhead to your monitor without any real benefits. After that, we have overdrive or input lag, or for me, it's response time. I would generally recommend setting it to the lowest possible or if it's like fast, super fast, extreme, which is in my case, I would set it to extreme. But this setting can cause ghosting for some people. And if that's the case, set it to one lower. So for G-Sync, I would recommend turning it off unless you play something like COD where latency doesn't matter that much and you benefit from the reduced screen tearing. That's like the only case where I would recommend using G-Sync, but otherwise it increases latency. It's pretty bad. Then we have backlight strobing, which this can be called ULMB, ELMB, Diac, pure xp or even other ones this is a setting i would recommend enabling because it reduces motion blur even if it adds a slight amount of latency in my opinion it's still worth enabling then we have extra settings like black equalizer or shadow boost i would recommend disabling that low blue light mode disable that if you want to like have a low blue light mode do it through windows not your monitor hdr disable that srgb you should disable that as well and lastly dynamic contrast or motion interpolation noise reduction disable all of those as well if you have any other settings you're curious about just comment below i'll tell you so the next set of tweaks is just going to be some general monitor related optimizations you can find these in our discord which will be linked in the description and uh, they're in the exm free resources category first we have disable multiplayer an overlay download this this basically prevents your pc from setting multiple image layers to your gpu which this may help you with issues like flickering black screens or stutters so just run the batch file as administrator and boom next up we have variable refresh rate which this will just prevent windows from automatically changing your refresh rate depending on the app just run it as administrator boom and lastly we have full screen optimizations which this isn't directly monitor related but this will just set fso in the most optimal way to reduce your input lag and it will also fix black screens when alt tabbing all right so that's all for the tweaks in our discord next up we're going to be making sure that your refresh rate is set properly because for some people for example if you have a 240 hertz monitor your refresh rate may be set at like 239.7 which that's not optimal. You should have it at 240. So this is how to check that it's set properly. And if it's not, then I'll show you how to fix it. So go into display settings, scroll all the way down, advanced display and find your main display, which for me, it's this. So as you can see, I have 239.47 Hertz, which is not my full refresh rate. If your refresh rate is like this, we will need to use CRU or the custom resolution utility to fix that. And you can find the link to it in the description. All you have to do here is just press download and download the zip file, then open up the zip folder and extract it. And in here, run cru.exe as admin, then make sure your main monitor is selected, go to extension blocks. In here, find the highest refresh rate your monitor offers, which for me is this one. Press on edit, make sure this is on manual and just set it to your normal refresh rate. Then press OK and then run restart64.exe, which will restart your graphics driver and apply it. So now we're going to be optimizing your monitor timings like front porch and sync width. This will directly affect how your GPU and monitor coordinate refresh cycles. This will improve your display latency especially on 240 Hz plus monitors. You have to change these settings in your GPU software. I'll show you how to find the settings on both Nvidia and AMD. So if you're on Nvidia, just uh, open Nvidia control panel, go to change resolution, press customize, make sure that enable resolutions not exposed by the display is enabled, then create a custom resolution. And you can see the settings here, but if you're on AMD, then open AMD Radeon software, make sure it's the adrenaline edition, then go to settings, display and find custom 
resolutions and this little menu should pop up and on both nvidia and amd we're going to be changing these two settings so here are my manual monitor timings so generally what i would recommend doing is decreasing front porch and sync width in increments of five for me it's this and then pressing test if you end up putting them too low your display might lose signal but don't worry if that happens it should automatically revert in 15 seconds and if for some reason that doesn't happen you have to boot into safe mode and delete the custom resolution which i'll leave a tutorial for that in the description i was able to get my monitor down to 10 each which for most of you guys this should be possible so lastly i'm going to go over some additional but very important tips so first i'm going to go over if you should use display port or hdmi i would recommend using display port in about 99% of cases because this play port can get slightly lower latency as it has direct packet based transmission which in some cases is better than HDMI which adds buffering. Display port also has a multitude of different features that HDMI doesn't have like better compatibility with multi-monitor setups. Generally I would just recommend using the display port cable that came in your monitor box when you bought it but yeah keep in mind this is only for PC for things like consoles or TVs HDMI will be better. So for newer monitors especially from Asus, BenQ and LG they may have firmware updates that fix bugs, improve override tuning, and other features. So here is how to check if your monitor has a firmware update. Go to Device Manager, go to Monitors, and find your main monitor, which for me is this kind of old Alienware monitor. And then just Google your exact monitor name and firmware behind it. I'm going to go on the Dell website. And as you can see, there's an Alienware monitor driver. So I'm going to download this, run it, and boom. And yeah, it should be like that for most monitors. If you don't have any, it's not a big deal. Next up, I have a tip which will apply to certain GPUs, but you should always plug your main monitor, which you play games on to the primary display port on your GPU. So some GPUs route secondary ports through extra MUXs or controllers, which can add some input delay. And also on multi-monitor setups, it's really annoying when you boot into BIOS and it pops up on like your second monitor. So here's how to fix that. Just search up your GPU and followed by primary port. So as you can see for EVGA 3080, the primary port is number one right here. For other GPUs, it may be completely random and you probably won't find any info on it. But yeah, it's different for each GPU. So just do your own research on this it shouldn't take long the last mistake that i'm going to be talking about is wrongly capping your fps and refresh rate for example i often see people on 360 hertz monitors capping their fps at 360 even though their pc cannot handle consistent 360 fps if that's you i'd highly recommend lowering both your fps cap and refresh rate to something more stable like 240 hertz it will get you better frame pacing more consistent input lag and overall everything will just be smoother and more responsive then after that unless you play on some stretch resolution then go ahead and disable any type of scaling because you don't need it all right yeah so that's everything restart your pc so the registry tweaks work and yeah have a great day guys